Hello, my name is Vitam Koda and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how we can modify our mover so it will move along the whole spline curve and if it reaches the end it will move backwards until it reaches the start and the process will repeat. Okay, this is the code which we got of our previous tutorial. And the first thing we will do is make the mover move towards the end of the spline curve. And for that I will change the code. So it will then use a local variable which keeps track of the current connection. To make the code a bit more readable. And this variable will contain the spline connection. We assign our start spline dot connections of zero to current connection. And replace the old references with our new variable. And the next thing we will do is check if our f distance is greater than the current curve's spline length. So we can swap to the next actor. So we'll type if f distance bigger than current connection dot spline component dot get spline length. And now we have to switch our spline actor by typing start spline equals current connection dot connect to and we have to reset f distance so our actor will start at distance zero of the new spline actor curve because this will equal the location of the spline actor. And if we do not reset our distance, our mover will jump forward to the end of the spline curve because we call get location at distance along spline of the new curve. To prevent that, we have to reset our f distance to zero. Let's compile. And start and our mover will now move along the whole spline curve but if it reaches the end you will see that we get a lot of warnings this is because we access the next connection even if there is none so we have to avoid this by first checking if there actually is a next connection. We do that by writing if current connection dot connect to dot connections dot length bigger than zero. What that will do is to check on our current connection if it has more connections afterwards. So the last spline actor on our curve will have no further connections and that means we cannot go further. Also we would get a lot of non-warnings in the console. Because this will always return none on the last actor of our curve. What we will do instead is to invert the direction our mover is moving so it will bounce back and slowly move to the start of the spline again. For that we will need a new variable which I call fspeed and we'll set that to 1 
and replace our increment in the tick with our variable. And in case our next spline actor has no further connections, we will set the speed to its negative value to invert the direction our mover is going in. Okay, that will now make our mover change directions at the end of the curve. But once it reaches zero on the current connection of our spline, it will stop. And now we have to deal with the same problem we had before. Our mover reaches a distance on the curve that is no longer within the curve. In this case, it is below zero, which means get location at distance along spline will always return our start spline actor's location. And now we have to switch our current connection into the other direction. We do that by writing if f distance below zero. We will use if start spline dot links from dot length greater than zero because links from gives us all connections to the spline actor, whereas connections gives us all connections from the spline actor. So if previous connections exist, we set the first one as our new start spline. And our current connection will be the first connection of our new start spline. In this case we don't have to test if connections is bigger than zero because we already know this new spline links to our previous spline. And we will set f distance to the length of our current splines curve. Which has the same effect as our f distance equals zero before, but in the other direction. At last we will do the same thing we did before when our current spline has no previous connections we will reverse the speed oh sorry okay that should reverse the speed and before i'll test it i'll just increase the speed otherwise it would be a bit boring to watch again start and our mover will now bounce between the first and the last spline actor. In the next tutorial we will refactor our code and create a custom spline which will contain much of the currently used functionality to make the code easier to use for different projects.